Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Husna Wardiyah binti Yusli and I'm from Tessel 2. So, um, today I'm going to present about the educational development in Malaysia during pre-independence. Okay, so uh, at the table of contents. So, the, for the first one, I'm going to present about the Pondo education system. Next is the vernacular education system. Next is Cheeseman Report uh, and also Barnes Report 1951 and Fangle Report 1951 and 1952. And the next one is Education and uh, Ordinance 1952. And the last one I'm going to present uh, the Result Report 1956. So for the first uh, first thing, I would auction of Pondo educational system. So Pondo originate from Arabic word funduk, which means a place or a shelter. Hence, it can be inferred that Skola Pondo consists of small building for the temporary shelter of students. So we can conclude that Pondo here is a shelter or a place for students to study and learn uh, during the uh, for their education system. So uh, the next one is the origin of Pondo education. So for the first place, we are going to see that Pondo education originates in Pat Southern Thailand. So Patani is a religion education center and Malay culturism famous in the 16th century and 17th century. So for this, uh, at this place, Patani, so um, the Pondo education is based on the compilation of Jawi books by uh, uh, Patani Ulama. And uh, the teachers there use Patani dialect when delivering lessons in the hot schools in Kedah and Perak. The second place is Kelantan and Indonesia. So for the Pondo education uh, that originates here, it is based on several Jawi books translated by ja Banjar and Javanese scholars, and they use them as a reference in the hot schools. So there are several Tok Guru who receive their education from Patani and Indonesia. So for the first person is Haji Zainal or Tuan Minal from Sungai Dua Hat uh, during the 1875. And the second person is Haji Mahmud Taib from Kubang Semanghat, Sebrang Prai, uh, Tengah, 1920. So next, we're going to look at education system. So education system in Malaysia existed since the heyday of the Malacca Empire. So it has been a long time ago since the education system has uh, existed. So during this time, uh, the education at that time was based on Islam as a result of the arrival of the holy religion to the Asian region, which later spread to Malacca. So we can conclude that during uh, that time during uh, the heyday of Malacca Empire, education system is was based on Islam as a result of the arrival of the holy religion. So next, Islamic education at an early age began to be taught in teachers' houses, then moved to mosque, Syria, madrasa. Uh, before being in cottage schools. It means that um, uh, initially Islamic education was based on uh, teachers' houses, then moved, more, uh, then moved to mosque, surau, and madrasa before it was entirely uh, centered entirely in cottage schools, which means uh, completely into cottage schools. Okay, next. Cottage studies is the oldest educational system in Malaya. However, there is no clear evidence or record stating, uh, stating that it's the existence of this institution. Even though um, they, uh, they say that um, cottage studies is the oldest education system, um, there is no uh, record of the uh, existence of this institution in history. So next, Pondo education system. So cottage schools appeared unplanned. 
it grew because of the response of the knowledge Jewish people. It means that um, during that time, uh, cottage schools appeared because of the people who love knowledge and they came to one place after another uh, to study more and to know more about um, knowledge. So uh, these people uh, have uh, contributed to the um, to the existence of cottage schools at that time. So next, the cottage system started when the Aceh ulama fled to other places, including Patani, during the clergy uh, uh, crusade 1821 until 1838, and the Atiji war 1878 until 1904 in Sumatra. So um, this system, which is cottage system, uh, it was started during these um, uh, these wars. So uh, we can conclude that um, during the clergy war, which is the crusade war and the Atiji war in Sumatra. So next, Pondo educational system are actually focused to men only as women are not allowed to get education during that time. So uh, why did I say this? Uh, it is because women at that time are, were being considered as the one of the causes of immorality. So these thoughts have been normalized in society. So during that time, women, uh, women are asked to only stay at home and only doing chores and do not even get the chance to uh, get addiction uh, like men. So that is why our Pondo Edition system are focused to men only. So next, Dala, Burmin, Samela, Dual, and Tulukmana cottages. These cottages are famous not just within the local students, but also students from various uh, places such as Burma, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaya, Philippines, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka. So we know that during that time, these uh, cottagers are not just uh, famous within the uh, local students, but also from other um, uh, from the students from other places. So next, initially, the cottage was an institution that isolated itself in rural areas. Um, why did cottage institution was isolated? So um, it is uh, because uh, to avoid negative influences or following foreign influences. They may think that um, a cottage institution may get negative influences from uh, the person who live in city or foreign influences who uh, from the person who uh, has come to our country at that time. So next, these are uh, the teaching methods of Pondo educational system uh, at that time. So there are three methods. So for the first one, uh, it is description or presentation. So for this method, uh, the teacher will read the book before lecturing it. And during the lecture, Students, uh, students will read the same book while ma uh, making notes in the book. So the key points in this um, uh, in this uh, method is the teacher will read the book and then the students will read the same book and making notes uh, in the book. So for the second method is Mauhidun approach or integrated approach. Um, so for this method, uh, the teacher will translate the verses from the book of fiqh and then they explain thoroughly. Then while teaching, they will explain the aspects of nahu, saraf, uh, balagha and uslub. Uh, if you want to know, uh, these aspects are uh, related to um, uh, Arabic language. So why would the teachers uh, explain about these aspects? So the, uh, they explained it because they want to bring uh, students closer to the language of the Al Quran. So, for the third method, which is the memorization, the students will memorize books uh, that are written briefly, such as the Book of Matan and Muhtasir. So, uh, we can conclude that there are three teaching methods um, uh, at the Pondo education system. So, next, vernacular education system. So, uh, 
the purpose of this uh, in, uh, of this uh, system or this education system is to promote the languages and cultural values of these communities. So as we know, uh, vernacular education system was actually uh, focused to ethnic and cultural communities uh, like Chinese and Indians. And so the medium of instruction that they use in vernacular schools are either Mandarin or Tamil. Uh, even though uh, these schools are focused to Chinese and Indians, but Bahasa Melayu uh, and Bahasa Malaysia and English language are taught as compulsory subjects. So next, Cheese Men Report. So Cheese Men Report, uh, between the years of 1941 until 1946, the Malay and Tamil schools are still ongoing during the Japanese government domination. So it means that during that time, Japanese uh, have uh, dominated our uh, country. So even though Japanese have uh, dominated our country at that time, Malay and Tamil schools are still ongoing. So in this report, it is stated that Japanese has been uh, the additional subject in schools. So other vernacular schools as well as English schools are replaced by Nippongo schools. And then they, um, they promote Nippongo teaching, Japanese classical songs and Japanese culture uh, in their curriculum. So next, the Japanese government abolished mainstream secondary education system, which means that they put an end to the mainstream secondary education. So this education has been replaced by vocational and technical lessons in fishery affairs, communications, ocean science, agriculture, and constructions. So all of these fields are organized by the Japanese. Uh, this uh, this report also stated that adults are also have been given the opportunity to learn Japanese. So next, Malaya was colonized by the British once again after the Second World War. At this time, the people of Malaya began to change. The Chinese and Indian people indicated that they wanted to reside in Malaya. So uh, at that time, the Malay people realized that uh, education is important to improve the academic and social position. Uh, then the Malay uh, asked uh, the British uh, government to improve the situation of education in Malay schools. So uh, to the purpose of these uh, of this report was to rebuild the education system in Malaya after that Japanese occupation without touching the unity of races. So we need to know that Cheeseman report is to rebuild the education system in Malaya. So next, the Cheeseman recommendations. So uh, for the first recommend uh, for the first recommendation, um, children that uh, who attend vernacular primary schools do not have to pay fees. So they ca they came to school for for free. So all primary school students have the opportunity to learn English. Uh, next, uh, the there will be only two types of secondary schools, which is middle school and high school. So next, vocational education must be implemented. Okay, okay. So let's we take a look on the Barnish Report, nineteen fifty one. It was chaired by uh, L. G. Barnes, director of the Social Training Division of Oxford University at the time. Um, it is uh, the purpose of this report is to set up. A bilingual school where the language of instruction is Bahasa Melayu and English. So, at uh, this report stated that Malay, Chinese, and Tamil institutions are converted gradually into national schools. So, um, religious teaching replaces the teaching of Jawi in schools, which means that religious teaching will not be teach again. So, uh, the teaching of Jawi. Uh, will replace uh, the religious teaching uh, lessons. So uh, uh, next is free education for all children in national schools. 
Bonus Report 1951. Uh, the next point is Chinese and Tamil schools were abolished at the primary school level. Uh, and there will be only one type of school, which means uh, which its name is national school. So national schools only use uh, one, Engli uh, one language as the medium of instruction, which is either Malay or English. So national schools are administered and co-founded by the local superintendent of education. So, which means that national schools are uh, controlled, uh, controlled fully by the local superintendent of education. So, uh, Manus report also stated that for secondary schools, English is the only medium of instruction that will exist. So, it means that they will only use English uh, at secondary schools. Okay, so next, Fenwood report 1951. So, uh, the first point is the formation of the Fanwu Committee is uh, were, was because of the opposition that have been put forward by the Barnes Statement. So, um, so uh, next is the purpose of Fanwu Report is to study the position of Chinese schools. And the next one is, uh, it was led by Dr. W. P. Fan, uh, American Education Specialist, and Dr. Wu Tehyao, United Nations uh, UN Official, or PBB. Okay, next. Fan Wu Report 1952. So uh, the Fan Wu Committee was formed by two chairmen, Dr. W. O. Fan and Dr. Wu Tehyao. So the language of instruction in vernacular schools was um, Malay, Chinese, and English. So um, this report found that basic education in Malaya should be aimed toward the formation of the Malayan citizen, citizenship, which means that um, uh, the basic education in Malaya should be able to um, uh, to produce students who shows the um, their identity as the Malayan citizenship. So uh, next, uh, they stated that forcing people of various uh, races to learn one or two languages will affect racial unity. As we know, in Malaya, there are uh, there are different races uh, comprised of. Malay, Malay, Chinese, and Indians. So they stated that if they force these races to learn one or two languages, uh, it will affect racial unity. So next, uh, Chinese people were aware and willing to learn in Malay and English as their additional languages. So at this time, uh, Chinese people were uh, willing to learn Malay and English as their additional languages, and it shall give encouragement. So next, Education Ordinance 1952. It was following the uh, the Barnes and Fonwood reports. The government has set up a central advisory committee to review both reports. So the committee established in 1951 is composed of 12 educators, Malay officials, uh, and vice uh, and official representatives of each race. So uh, so which means that Malay, Chinese, and Indians will be the vice and official uh, representative of the committee, the committee. So next, Education Ordinance 1952. Um, the purpose is to set up two types of schools that use Malay and English as their medium of instruction. Um, national school education system implemented through the introduction of English gradually in Malay, Chinese, and Tamil schools. Uh, and next, Malay and English language have also began to be enforced in Chinese and Tamil schools, which uh, Chinese and Tamil schools are focused only to um, use Malay use Tamil and Chinese as their um, medium of instruction, but Malay and English language have also begun to um, be pressured in these schools. So national English type of schools are maintained. Next, 
Malay language lessons are compulsory in English schools, while English language lessons are compulsory in Malay schools. Okay, so the next one, religious education is held during school hours for Muslim students which means that the Muslim students will lend the religious um, t religious uh, education during the school hours. So the next one, the vocational uh, schools are developed and Chinese and Tamil lessons should be provided if there are at least 15 students. So if that in that class, they have 15 students, so Chinese and Tamil lessons will, uh, will be provided to the... Chinese and Indians. Okay, so next, Razak Report 1952. So it was led by Tun Haji Abdul Raza, uh, who sent uh, the Minister of Education Federation of Malaya. So uh, the aim is to make Malay language as the national language. So uh, it also wants to uh, develop racial unity. Uh, and they also want to establish an efficient and effective education management system. They also want to provide adequate learning facilities uh, to students and to every school in um, Malaya. Okay, so next, Raza Report Proposals. So they want to create two types of primary schools, namely National Primary Schools, which is SRK, uh, stand for uh, Sekolah Rendah uh, Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan and National Primary Schools which is Sekolah Rendah Jenis Kebangsaan. So Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan use Malay as the language of instruction uh, while English is still compulsory. So Sekolah Rendah Jenis Kebangsaan use Chinese and Tamil as the language of instruction. SRJK is like the um, uh, the vernacular system, vernacular education system. Okay, so next, uh, Bahasa Melayu and English are compulsory. So next is Chinese and Indians are allowed to learn their respective mother tongues if there are at least 15 students, which means that uh, uh, if there are students in a class, they will allow Chinese and Indians to learn their respective mother tongues, which is Chinese and Tamil. So next is Bahasa Melayu and English are the compulsory subjects for all schools. And also to enter secondary school, students must pass the secondary school entrance examination. So next is education policy is the responsibility of the Minister of Education, which means that the Minister of Education uh, will have the responsibility to control the education policy uh, and the things that are related to education. So uh, that is all for my sl uh, slides. So this is the uh, hot question. So based on your knowledge about the history of the educational development in Malaysia during the pre-independence, how would you apply it in your studies and in your future way of teaching? Okay, that's all for me. Um, uh, thank you for listening.